and welcome y'all back here with the Hot Boys. This video is just to show y'all I'm gonna practice what I preach. I'm gonna do four different hair textures, four hair cuts in an hour. I'm gonna use the detachable blades and I'm gonna use the masters with the lever. That way you get a chance to see how I grab master blade work and you can see how I can do both at the same time and you'll be able to see it and get all the instructions and understandings from my videos and our descriptions. All right, let's go. Hey, so tell me what you're getting today. All right, I think I kinda just want like a five around the side and the backs and then the top just trim like i don't know maybe a half an inch or so and then uh just kind of clean up the side like the back and however you think looks good all right got you i'm gonna take care of you and get it popping for y'all and i want to just start off by saying it all for y'all thank you for taking the time out of y'all day to come do this with me help me out and make this video during this covid 19 pandemic i appreciate all y'all thank you so much Free cuts? Free cuts? Hey. <laughs> I don't know about all that, but uh, we'll get you. Take that off. So, Dries, when did you find out about how to cut hair that way? Man, people don't even know when I went to Myanmar. I went into a barber shop. These boys didn't have no blades, just one clipper, no lever on a clipper. And they was giving iced out handcuffs. And they was doing it, looking as good as our cuts here in the, in the United States. And I'm over there in Asia, and I'm like, what the heck is going on? How are they getting these handcuffs? So I actually went into the daggone barbershop and started talking with them. And they was like, hey, pick the clippers up and you cut some hair, let us show you how we do it. And they showed me. And ever since then, I said, I gotta figure out how to make one blade and cut three different levels, because that's what they was doing. They was over there going flat, made high, swinging on an angle, making all haircuts come out sweet. And I said, wow, that's what I need to do. And that's how I started. This flat mid high, swinging on an angle. And by the way, they haircuts was not taking no 45 minutes to an hour. <laughs> they weren't. And I'm like, how y'all doing this with, with no lever, one and, sticking blade, and a razor blade? And adding color, too. And was adding color. Beijing, huh? Mink out, whatever. <laughs> and I was like, wow. I mean, that was that. I seen some clean burst things out there, man. <laughs> Mohawk, whatever you want. You, you name me, you had it. I feeling like a barber anymore? I actually didn't believe I was a barber. They were, but I wasn't. <laughs> Did they have the same clippers, like as far as electricity goes, wires, everything, or? Nah, it was some rinky thing clippers, man. The red electricity was totally different. Some Walmart clippers? Yeah, and they pretty much were doing with Walmart clippers. No masters, no wall scenes, no babyless, and all of that. <laughs> Them boys was out there. Just doing their thing. That's crazy. No, I'm guarding. You can't guard me. We actually got some footage of you, you know, hanging out in the shop with them. Yeah, and one of these days I might put that video up. How'd you start shaving time on the haircuts? I had to practice on somebody. <laughs> and just coming into the shop, timing myself, practicing the movement, stuff like that. And uh, I took time to think about the booklet I was making because I knew I had to teach you guys how to cut hair. So I had to put it together mentally and then form a booklet so I could teach somebody else. That's how this all came about. So how come the first thing you didn't think of was just go faster? Man, going faster was what I tried. You know what I mean? Everybody want to try going faster. And, uh, in the business, that's what a lot of barbers do. You know, They just go faster. But what ends up happening is customers, when they see you going faster, they thinking you jipping them out of a good haircut. So you got to be able to do the same thing you normally do without letting them see you moving fast. 
but the actual movement of what you're doing is fast, but your body is not moving fast. You're letting the clipper cut the time for you. There you go. And even with the scissoring, you know, sometimes you know that people part the hair and they do the ankle cuts, but really you could cut time on scissoring if you can get the hair and lift it up and make all your connections without having to grab the hair. And again, this is all just because of the situation, man. At the end of the day, people don't understand, barbers got families to feed. And if I can give you the same quality haircut in less time, that means I can get more haircuts in that amount of time. And then that means I can make more money. And if you still get the same quality haircut and the conversation, why not? Everybody want to raise. You know what I mean? The, the average cat that you cut, he go to his boss and ask for a raise. And they come in the barber shop and the barber go up on the price. They get in. But everybody's supposed to get a raise except the barber? That don't make sense. I never I mean, understood that. I mean, you might get a nice cut and get the job even, you know? So. Right. I give you a nice cut. You see your wife, you meet your wife and you get married because of my cut. <laughs> <laughs> I give you a nice cut. You, you, go, you go on a job interview and get a good job. Make $50,000. And then you come to the shop and say, I say, hey man, haircut's gonna be $25. Dang, man, you gotta go up again? Well, you got a raise? You got a good job? You doing all that, but I can't get a raise? You came up you, by my pockets. You can bro, but I can't bro. So. You can bro, but I can't bro. <laughs> and also too, sometimes you don't wanna be in the chair for an hour. And, I mean, you got, you got places to do things to do on a Saturday. I don't have time to be sitting in the shop all day. I don't get why people want to sit in the chair for now. That don't register in my brain. Like, I, I'm, I'm held hostage at this barbershop. And to sit there and know you're over there fiddling on someone else's head, and I know I'm going to get in there and be stuck there for an hour. Oh, like, my God. The problem is, most of the time on Saturdays, it's already swamped. Yeah. And you try to get it throughout the day, and you either are getting it during the lunch break, and you just got off work and you ain't trying to sit on that chair for an hour. Yeah, no, that's for sure. No. You trying to get a cut, get home, shower, and do what you got to do on a Saturday night. You know? Yeah. I have to take the, take, I have to take the day off. Why? I got to get a haircut. Yeah. Yeah. Just so you can go during the week just when so you're not busy, right? Yeah. And still take an hour. Still take an hour. You just take you. Barbara and DMV getting real close. Yeah. Real close. <laughs> You were talking about the other day you went on the lunch break. <laughs> Tell us about that. that yeah, about I went I went to the shop and went in there and tried to get a uh wanted to get a real simple haircut, nothing crazy. And you know, shop probably everyone's talking and everything and about sports and whatnot. And then he looks at me half my hair cut and goes, Hey man, you mind if I if I take a break and eat my lunch real quick? Yeah, I mean, what am I supposed to say? I mean, like, I was like, I was kind of like, yeah, you know, like, preferably no, but, I mean, if you need to, I guess you need to, and I thought he was going to take a quick lunch break, he took like a 30, 40 minute lunch break, wow. so I ended up being there for almost two and a half hours, I was there for a long time, and that's when I found Greece, and it was a lot better, yeah, and the sad part, that's one not one. a unique story, no, and the cut wasn't even that nice, especially compared to what I've been getting in, what, 15 minutes? Yeah. I mean, any other thing you do, I get it, it's your hair, you know, it's precious. But if I don't feel the barber moving quickly, you know, I'm not getting nicked, I'm not, my head isn't getting any whiplash, I'm happy to pay for the same cut in half the time. Yeah. Anywhere else you go, you want to sell quickly for the same price. You go to McDonald's, you don't want to wait 30 minutes before you go to McDonald's. No. Anywhere you go, it's all about time is money. Why can't it be the same, especially as a customer, for me? It's not just about me sitting in the chair, no. but if it takes 20 minutes for me, and now I watch you cut other people in 20 minutes, that means I know, oh, I can get a cut within the hour, not within today. Yeah. yeah. If you say at Olive Garden, you get your food in five minutes, guaranteed. Sign me up. Sign me up. Every Sorry. day. <laughs> Endless pasta. That's why fast food is what it is. Yeah. You know, you gotta get it within that time. I need a uh, flathead screwdriver, Caleb.
You know, when we were learning to cut hair, I mean, going through that gradual process of getting faster than them was actually scary. It was very and y'all was you, cutting next to bona fide barbers. Yeah. And then we were, we were like three, four months deep. And we're just like, what are you doing over there? Why are you taking so long? I'm trying to think of what was that. What holiday was it? Thanksgiving. Yep, and he said, remember he, remember the conversation? So, yeah, I'm going to have y'all ready to cut in six weeks. Six weeks? Yeah. You going to put me on the floor? Yeah. That was a nightmare. I'm going to put you on the floor in six weeks. Man, these Man, that was scary. I'm having problems with these clippers. Hey, that's real life. That happens in the shop, too. It happens in the shop, <laughs> But What was it? I'll ask you straight up, Joey. What was it like learning... You know, you were a part of this program that he did on the channel. So, what was it like going through the program, highs and lows? <laughs> uh, highs was the end result of you knew what was going to happen, and you weren't taught. You were taught how to cut hair. Mm -hmm. So, no matter which clip you picked up, you knew what you were doing. But that gaining experience part and shacking people up was the worst part of the whole process. Just like. You, you don't want to do bad on somebody's head. And then they have to deal with that haircut for what? Two or three weeks of yeah. good fortune. Yeah, and it's just like, that, that that would be to me one of the scariest parts because not having the lever and the guard right in the beginning and just being taught how to just straight cut hair. By these rules, they're going to work, but you got to learn to use your wrist. Your wrist is the lever. That, that gave, me, gave me some fit. Wrist, definitely. I remember some days your wrist just didn't want to move anymore. I mean, forearm even. And I'm not gonna lie, there was nights I went home and I would watch YouTube and I'm like, man, why aren't we cutting hair <laughs> like that. this? It looks so much easier, not as stressful, but... What did some of the barbers used to do when I on my day off to I remember that, I can talk about that. I'm on the barbers, right after my dad left, he told me, hey man, put the detachables down, man. You need to pick up, pick up that Andes, put your guards on, and just go to work. I know what your father said, I know he mean well, but this is how you should do it. You know, I trust my father. He ain't still be wrong yet, so... <laughs> but three months later, that same barber recognized a difference. Now, he was a bona fide barber. He, beautiful haircuts, nice. It's just the time. Not talking about how good you are. It's just the time. So, I remember one day the shot was slammed. And uh, I was taking care of people. Nice haircuts, good customer service, but it wasn't in 45 minutes to an hour. And he looked at me and I looked at him and we... We had an understanding of, okay, I'll never say something about your father's technique again, and he never said it again. So, it's just... Message received. Yeah. Well, but I feel like that's what, like, really classifies someone who can cut here and someone who's an actual barber. You can have nice tools, but if you don't know how to use them mm -hmm. and finesse with them, then, I mean, what are you really doing? You can look nice and cool with all these fancy stuff, but yeah, if you don't know how to work it... And it's just funny that cutting hair has not changed. Think about that. Anything engineered over time throughout generations been changed, upgraded, the technique. Mm -hmm. Cutting hair is the exact same technique they've used for centuries. For centuries. It's right. just the same exact thing. It's like no one has improved. Like Steph Curry now changed the concept of how shooting threes. Now, it's not like dudes didn't have the qualifications or the skills to do it. Right. No one just practiced enough to make it an automatic thing. Now these dudes are practicing, it's automatic. Just shooting from the local regularly. And it's like you've got to change evolve the game work on something and i really do feel that that comes from the barber world doesn't cooperate with one another very well because most people just have an idea of something they want, they want to do but when they tell someone what they want to try everyone looks at them like they're stupid and when you actually try it that's when people want to pay attention so mm -hmm. you just you gotta bypass all the talking and just go for it and you know how i knew about that in the barber world remember when we we're doing repairs yes and somebody comes in and you ice out their clippers they go back to the shop with your car talking, oh, and then you go into the shop a month, three months later, they never talked about you. Mm -hmm. Because you got their clippers right, that was cutting time for them, and it wasn't sharing with any other. No. I they actually remember the day we went to the shop, and the barber said to us, and we said to him, hey, you need to tell the other barbers, you know, we take care of them stuff too. He said, no, 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 you only come for me. You only make my stuff good. I don't want them, I don't want their stuff hitting like mine. And I was like, as a little kid, I was 12 years old at the time, and I looked at my father, I'm like, why wouldn't you want your fellow barbers in your shop? That's a business to make money for everybody to cut it. Why do you, as the owner, only want to make 
you know, have the best clippers. Yeah, welcome to my world. That's pretty much been my whole life. That's pretty much been my whole life working in the shop next to people. You know, I always used to be like, why well, barbers so segregated? They seem so cool to each other, but when it comes to their skills, their talent, they hide what makes me pretty good to the next barber because everybody is about my customer, my money, my livelihood. Every other profession I know work together to make it better. But sometimes the barber world, they don't. So you know how many barbers called me and said, why are you doing these videos, bro? Showing people how to cut hair. Other barbers, other sharpeners called me. Why are you showing people how to sharpen their blades? What are you doing? You messing with our money. And I'm like, bro, I'm not messing with nobody money. I'm just showing people how to get better at stuff we do. If you, if people like you and they gonna spend money with you, they gonna spend money with you regardless. I'm not gonna take your money away. I'm not taking money away from myself. But that's the world we live in. But it's funny, I will say that's the one thing I noticed is different. We went to the Arizona shows, dudes was in their own world. They were on their own throne. And the California shows, them dudes was real nice. Yeah. They were really talking to each other, explaining things. They were really hyping each other up. So that's the only thing I did notice is the difference. Over here, mm -hmm. it's just, I mean, it's a challenge because that's how it is in the barbershop. Every man for himself, usually. So. Yeah. Even when we work minute. together, customers, customers were shocked the to way see we, how we work together in the shop. If a customer come in and I couldn't get him, and I would say, hey, you know, my, my, my son can get you, or my brother can get you. They be like, oh, it's okay to get in his chair? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, brother, it don't matter whether you pay me or pay him. It's we, the shop. It's the shop. The shop lights have to stay on. Right. <laughs> you know? We together here. If all Whether the money go to me or whoever, as long as it's in here, we good. Right. We gotta pay these bills somehow. One person can't cut everybody, and then it's like, we've got more people out of the shop, and you all take a, take a turn. And, That's so and matter of fact, remember, we would tell customers, tell them how to cut their hair, so we yeah. make sure you get the same cut. Hey, don't take the tail, don't take the skin too high, like right here. Just swing it down. You make sure. And, and it's funny, I don't know if barbers do that really, but they you say to them, well, I'll get a number two. You know you've been cutting them with the one and a half the entire time. Yeah. So you never straighten them out. So when they go to another shop and say a number two and get a number two, they're like, oh, the person jacked me up. They didn't jack you up. You they did exactly what you told them yeah. to do. Unfortunately, no one instructed you what you want to really get the whole time. I will speak. My dad for me was good example of remembering clients haircuts and i remember you were in training and i said to you i said how do you remember every person's haircut some people came only one time didn't come for months and he's like oh you got the skin fade number two on top right and i was like what and even they were like uh yes <laughs> and then before you know it you know we knew <laughs> and i remember one time your customer got in my chair that's the worst one it's not that my customer it's yeah. your customer i remember everybody else's customer's cut so joey's customer come by like hey joey's not here but i can cut you i say what you get skin fade comb over hard part right and he was like oh my god pay attention i want to make sure whoever gets in my chair i can give them the same cut so but i do say it that does come from being family so i think if we were anybody else we might have adopted the same yeah so and that's why a lot of successful barbers are usually family owned and operated it just gets passed down generation to generation the barber's like, business started off being passed down from family and that's pretty much how they was able to be successful because family worked together and cut the family the neighborhood together uncle brother son mom sister that's what made it successful. I also appreciate, you know, yeah, I know, I know what y'all gonna say about me, but I like the customers. Okay, so I try to make the customers feel like <laughs> oh, we know you. We okay. know you. Yes, get it out the way. But I do appreciate how people will come in expecting to be treated one way, and they were treated like that. Right? So I do miss that, you know, people come in looking around, okay, it's all black barbers, okay, I don't know if they can cut me, we cut straight hair, I remember guys will come in with hair down here, talking about just trim me up, you know, we cut everybody. Ooh. Remember some of the customers that come in and look at us and Definitely. say, it's all black people all in there. <laughs> they ain't gonna cut it, and they were, we and they were run. I remember, remember the, I chased one customer out the door and said, hey, we can cut your neck, and he said, no, thank no, you. No, I'm good. No, so you said, can't cut you me. You gonna get me, you ain't gonna get me like this. 
So, but it was nice, you know, we got kids. I mean, little kids, we got some babies. First haircuts we did in there. First, oh, you know, yeah. first certificate. <laughs> so it was a good time. I still will never understand why we charge kids less. <laughs> I still won't. To the day I die, I'll never understand. Oh, his glasses. His glasses. Yeah, he looks really good. You need your glasses, huh? Uh, no. Clock can't. <laughs> good to go? Yeah, it looks great. Man. You gotta get the day and the job. Alright, put that mask back on. Uh,